Okay, I don't know much about geography, so I went online and looked up the different places that we went and um, wrote down some little fun facts about them. So when I open it up for questions, don't ask me anything about the places that we went. <laughs> You can ask me all you want about shoebox. Don't ask me about the places that we went. Are you going to turn some of the lights down? Okay, y'all can see? Yes. All right. Um, as most of you know, um, Linda Edwards and I went to, um, we flew over to Thessaloniki. Um, we left on a Thursday night, had an overnight flight, um, and we flew into Munich, Germany. And then from Munich, we went to Thessaloniki. It was in the afternoon when we got there. And um, Bryce and Shelley met us at the airport um, and picked us up. And this is at the hotel um, that we stayed at in Thessaloniki. It was called the Hotel Avalon of Thessaloniki. It was really nice inside. And this right here, I have a whole bunch of notes, so you're going to have to bear with me. Um, I'll give you a little bit of a fun fact about Thessaloniki. Thessaloniki, Greece, Greece is the capital of the Macedonia prefecture. It is the second largest city in Greece after Athens. And it is, on, it is honorarily called the co-capital for its historical importance. And this was um, <clears throat> in a little town called Per. I don't even know how to pronounce half these words. Um, Perea. It's a suburb of Thessaloniki, Greece, and it's part of the municipality Thermakos. Perea is located on the south coast of the Thermiac Gulf. So that's the Thermiac Gulf right there. We went down there. They took us down there. Um, Bryce. After him and Shelly dropped us off at the hotel, he went home and got Macy and came back and he's like, you gotta walk, you gotta go walk. I gotta keep you up so that you'll be on our time. You can't go to bed till it's our time. <laughs> so he kept us walking after we had flown all day and all night. And then we went and had dinner. And this was in Kavala. It's an orange tree. Yes, they do have oranges in Greece. In, um, Greece. But this is in Kavala. This is where we, um, in the parking lot, <clears throat> where we parked. Um, Kavala is a city in northern Greece, the principal seaport of eastern Macedonia. Historically, the city is also known by two different names. In antiquity, the name of the city was Neapolis, which meant new city. Like many Greek colonies during the Middle Ages was renamed to Christopolis, which means the city of Christ. And um, <clears throat> a fun fact, the, the Apostle Paul landed at Neapolis during his first voyage to Europe. And this is called the Church of St. Nicholas. That was in um, Kavala or Neapolis. That was really pretty, the mosaic. And of course, they're all in different languages, but they do have one that the top of this right up here is in English, and it's actually um, Acts 16, 9 through 12. And I think I have it on the phone. So you can look it up. It's Acts 16, 9 through 12. And if you look closely up back on the mountain back there, you can see some of the, the um, fortress ruins that are there that they built this city around. <coughs> this was on our way um, <clears throat> when Bryce picked us up on Saturday to take us to um, Slotograd. This was on our way. I thought this. Palm tree looks pretty cool. 
Yeah, it does. And then they had these things. These actually have bottle caps in them. They had those on the sidewalks. I thought those were really neat. And then this is, you can see more of the, the fortress there. And I think that's the Aegean Sea right there. And this is called the um, Holy Baptistry of St. Lydia. This was in the town of Lydia. This church was absolutely gorgeous inside. This is um, St. Paul right here. And I don't know what it says underneath it there because it's in Bulgarian or Greek. I'm sorry, it's in Greek. And then this is actually um, Lydia. She was referred to as St. Lydia. And this was the inside of the church. It was like that all over the whole church. The stained glass. And this, this is about the spot where Lydia was baptized at. The water was cold. And that's an olive tree. And yes, we did taste the olives, and ooh, they were not, they were bitter, very bitter. Okay, so the outdoor baptistry that I just showed you. Um, it's at, it says it's at the riverside of Zagati, outside the walls of Philippi. The pious Lydia listened carefully to the preaching of Paul, believed and was baptized by the great apostle, and became the first Greek European Christian. Um, they do still do baptisms at that baptismal. It says every year the day of the memory of the equal two apostles, St. Lydia of Philippines, on May 20th, after the festive divine liturgy, clergy and people with the prominent metropolitan descend to the river and perform baptisms of adults, brother, and brothers who come voluntarily to the Orthodox faith and church with great joy. It says these moments are very touching and unique. And this is when we made it to Zlatograd. That's Pastor Anton. He's the one that we were with all week when we did, when we handed out shoeboxes. And we stayed, um, he built a sanctuary behind his house, which you'll see in a few moments. It's attached to his house. And above it, he built a, a big room that's sort of like, it has like a little kitchenette type thing in it. And um, they take the kids up there on Sunday mornings and have Sunday school with them during their worship service. But um, it also has two rooms in it, and um, we stayed up in those rooms while we were there. Bryce stayed um, up there with us. So we were all together the whole time. And that's one of the mosques. Every village that we went into, there was either a mosque or an Orthodox church. There aren't any evangelical churches. That's in Vladegrad where we were. And then they just build right up the side of the mountain. And you look at it and you go, how do they get up there? There's roads, one way in and one way out. And this was actually, we were walking every day. Bryce made us walk. He's like, come on, let's go walk. Let's go walk. I told him I felt like I was in Australia going on a walkabout every afternoon. <laughs> But anyway, um, there's a, a river or something that runs in that ditch, right, or big old canal right there. And there's a road on the other side of it, and we were on the road that was on this side of it. But there's houses like that all along that road. And this was at one of the restaurants um, that we ate at in Vladegrad. I think it was Sunday after church we went to that restaurant. Um, and before we went to Zlatograd, we, we talked to Macy and we asked Macy, what's good to eat? What, do we, what should we eat while we're over there? 
So she was telling us about the salad, and I'll tell you what salad in a minute, and then the homemade chicken noodle soup. It was so good. Um, but anyway, that salad I fell in love with. It's called a Shopska salad, and it has cucumbers and the best tomatoes you'll ever taste. And I'm not a big tomato eater, but I love their tomatoes. And it has red peppers, and I think it has some, I mean, I'm sorry, it has red onions, and I think it has, sometimes they put roasted red peppers in it, and some um, black olives and some celery, but the cheese on top is called serenade, and it's a goat cheese, and it is so good. I wish I could have brought some back with me. And now, Linda, do you remember what church that was? That was a church that we saw when we were walking with um, Bryce and Dwight O'Brien, not far from where we were staying, but I can't remember what he said the name of that church was. But we didn't, we did, yeah, we did go inside that one. It was Orthodox. Yeah. And this is, this used to be a school that's on the same property as that church. And that's inside of it. That's inside the church. And then this tells about the school. It says, in 1852, the mutual school was built in Zlatograd. In 1978, the museum collection named Education in the Middle of Radokis was exhibited in it. The real classroom, the teacher's room, and the teacher's living room are well preserved till nowadays. The enlightening spirit and atmosphere of the Bulgarian revival can be felt in the museum. So the school's a museum. Okay, go back to the picture that I showed you where I told you there was that canal that ran through there. This is the water from the canal, and you can walk along the road and look over on the other side of the canal. The houses that are over on the other side, they build these makeshift ladders right here so that they can climb over the railing there and climb down these ladders. And those are cabbages. Everywhere we were, there was, you would see a plot of land that someone just made claim to and put a garden in, and it was cabbage, cabbage everywhere. And that um, plastic thing right there, um, we call them greenhouses, but they call them hot houses. And that, it was cold too, and that cabbage was growing like that. And every, this was in the town center that we, um, in Zlatograd where we were. Every town, no matter how much money they had or didn't have, they all had a Christmas tree that was decorated. Okay, this is inside the sanctuary um, of Pastor Anton. We were getting the shoe boxes ready. Now the shoe boxes that we handed out um, came from Germany. They didn't come from the United States. And the, the strange thing is when, when they open their shoe boxes, they open long ways. The lid opens up long ways. Instead of short ways, how we open them, they open up long ways. But you'll see, and I don't know if you'll see in some of the pictures, but um, they were able to put candy in them. We're not allowed to put candy in them. They were allowed to put liquid soaps and stuff in them, and we weren't allowed to do that. We aren't allowed to do that at all. But also, um, the cartons are much smaller than our cartons. They only hold 10 or 11 boxes, where ours hold more than that. And that's the sanctuary. Um, we moved some of the chairs around because we were moving shoe boxes around. But that's the sanctuary that um, Anton has his church service in every Sunday. And we got the privilege to worship with them um, on the Sunday after we got there. And it was a really neat experience, even though he was talking in Bulgarian. One of the girls that was in that goes to his church came and sat between Linda and I and translated everything for us. And there we are loading shoe boxes into the into Anton's um, minivan so we could go out Monday morning. We did that every morning, Monday to Friday. Mm -hmm. We did. 
he would he would call up the um, schools. He we went into okay. What we did was um, we went in we went I don't know how many miles away, but we went up this mountain where they had just built this new road. And now Pastor Anton, he's been up and down that mountain millions of times. So he did not go slow. And we're talking winding road up and down and all around. And, you know, God had to be with me because I get motion sick really easily. And I made it through the whole week up and down that mountain every day. But um, also, there, there was no railing. I mean, there must have maybe been a six-inch railing when you, you know, on the outside, not the side up against the mountain. And we always said, what's going to happen if you, you're going to end up way over there on that car that's down there on the other part of the road? And, and um, Pastor Anton would say, well, that's when you sing, I believe I can fly. <laughs> <laughs> so every day when, when we got ready to go and he was flying through, you know, he, I don't know how fast he was going, even though I was sitting up front. Um, with him, but um, I would look at him and go, okay, Pastor Anton, I'm not ready to fly today. I'm not ready to fly. <laughs> but this was one of the schools, um, the first school that we stopped at, and that's how many, I think that's a combined class right there. They have these huge schools, and they only use a few of the rooms in them because there aren't that many children. So they combined the first through, I think, was it seventh grade? They, they combined the first through seventh grade. But this was the first school that we handed out shoeboxes to. And um, they didn't have a lot. I don't know what that says. Um, they don't have a lot, but they made us lunch before we left, which was really nice of them. And then this was one of the schools that we went to. We visited 10 different villages. Um, and this was the one where um, Pastor Anton and I asked him if we could hand him out because he would go in. I have a video. It's like a six or seven minute long video, but I'm not, I don't have it on the, this feed. Um, but um, it's him talking in Bulgarian to the children before he gives them the shoeboxes. And he told us that um, he spoke English. So um, he told us that he he starts in the beginning. God created the heavens and the earth, and he had a book that had pictures in it. And I have the video of him talking about it with the book that has all the pictures. And then he goes through um, a little bit of he chronicles Jesus' life and when he dies and all of that. And then he hands out the shoeboxes. Well, I asked him if we could hand out the shoeboxes, and he said yes. So we got to hand out a few. I don't think did you hand any out? I don't think I don't know if you did or not. But this class only had three children in it. But every day I was going to tell you, he would call the, the different schools that he um, had talked to the directors and um, built up relationships with to find out how many children um, they had, if they had a first grade, how many children were in it. And then um, if they combined the class, then he would find out how many children were in it and what age groups we needed. So we would load the car accordingly. And when we handed out shoeboxes over there, um, they're what's known as an affiliate um, country. So, I, okay, so when I did my speech two weeks ago um, on a Sunday morning, I talked about how Samaritan's Purse has a picture-perfect model of how the shoebox ministry looks. And what it is is they, they have an outreach program. They invite you kids to it. And um, they do it at a church, at a local church in the country. And then they um, give them the shoebox that has the pamphlet that tells them about Jesus. It's all in their native language. And then they invite them back to a 12-week discipleship course, which is like Sunday school, where they can learn more about Jesus and accept him as their Lord and Savior and all. And then um, they also um, get a graduation certificate and they once they graduate they get a new testament bible and their native language that has bible stories in it from the um old testament well these affiliate countries since the boxes that we gave out in germany came from germany 
that doesn't happen over there. So um, the boxes that go from the United States, that's the picture perfect model that happens in the countries that those go to. So our shoe boxes, I can tell you, that's what happens because they go to Burkina Faso, they go to Chad, they go to the Dominic Democratic Republic of Congo, they go to Mali, and last year, this past year, they went to Senegal. So all those boxes get that outreach program and all of that. But since the shoe boxes we handed out came from Germany, they're known as an affiliate country, they don't get the same treatment as the shoe boxes that go from the United States. So he would give them a pamphlet with it that came from Samaritan's Purse that tells them who Jesus is, and then he gave them a book um, according to their age that had Bible stories in it. So every day, it, at first it bothered me, but then when I thought about it, there's just way too many villages for them to have someone on the ground in every single village that can teach these children about who Jesus is. So we would pray every day before we left, and our prayer was that, you know, these, these children will read this book and read this information, or their parents and grandparents, if they live with their grandparents, will read the information, and hopefully they'll have, it'll have an eternal impact on those kids somewhere down the road, because you never know what seeds you plant. That was another class. But look, they don't have central heat in there. They have wood-burning stoves. There's one back there, and then I have a picture of one I'll show you later. These, now, we didn't get to see all the kids open their shoeboxes, but we got to see some of them. It depended on what time we got there. That little kid liked his calculator right there. There's Bryce in the background. Cows. <laughs> Only in Bulgaria will you see cows roaming free. to go up the mountain, we went through this little village called Nadelano. And every day they had to stop at this one place and um, get us orange juice. And it was fresh squeezed orange juice. And Pastor Anton thought that it was the best orange juice you've ever had. Well, it doesn't compare to ours here in the United States. But I thought that they, they were buying extra oranges. I thought that they were picking oranges for them to squeeze for us. That was another school. Christmas child, and then on the right, he had the book that had the Bible stories in it. I don't know what Pastor Anton said to them, but they, they all picked up the books that he handed them and held them up. I thought that was pretty cool. And the little boy, you can't see it, but if I could blow the picture up, okay, it gets blurry. 
he had a pencil on his desk, and now, mind you, it's only January, and the pencil, I think, was only about this big, and that's all that, that's the only pencil that he had. So that's why it's important to put school supplies in shoeboxes. There's another um, moss in the background. This was um, on either side of the school that I just showed you. And then there's an Orthodox church on the other side in the back back there. This was another class. It had older children in it. And look how close they build to the road. It's amazing how close. And that's one, one way in and one way out. So if you're going up, and there's a car in the way. You have to wait for the other car to go by before you can go down. That class didn't have any children. There's a little one right here. 